So now, uh, Jilali uh, will talk about um, septic shock, of course, and the use of uh, corticosteroids with brand new da data. <laughs> Thank you, Karim. So uh, first of all, sepsis, as you know, has been uh, very recently redefined as a condition where, where infection, an infection is complicated with organ dysfunction. Uh, and septic shock is basically the the, the more, uh, most lethal complication of uh, infection and uh, in spite of uh, uh, antibiotics so, or anti-infective uh, drugs. So it's very important in this uh, syndrome uh, that we uh, get adjunctive treatment to improve patient's outcome. So then my disclosure on that topic. And so let's uh, be uh, consensual about the background. Let's, uh, let's say that systemic inflammation is the hallmark of uh, sepsis and ARDS, right? Okay, let's say that corticosteroids are known to modulate uh, the immune response to sepsis, right? Through genomic and non-genomic effects. And we know that cytokines may suppress the endogenous cortisol production and access to tissues inducing corticosteroid insufficiency in about half of patients. So in this condition where infection causes cardiovascular failure, and we know that cardiovascular failure drives uh, uh, mortality issues in patients in the ICU, uh, we have now plenty of data showing that the use of glucocorticoids in patients with septic shock actually restore the cardiovascular homeostasis. And I just pick up the most recent data from the ENZIC uh, trial group published in the New England Journal of Medicine a couple of weeks ago, where they looked at the effect of hydrocortisone versus placebo in roughly 4,000 patients in the ICU. And, and as one can see here, patients were lucky enough to receive hydrocortisone were uh, um, wind off the vasopressor therapy much earlier than those who did receive the placebo. Also, it's important to understand that because glucocorticoids are modulating the immune response, uh, they will likely uh, relieve uh, the or attenuate the intensity of organ dysfunction and organ failure. So looking here on these slides, on the uh, organ function as assessed by the SOFA score after one week of treatment in RCTs published so far, there is uh, a substantial evidence that treatment with glucocorticoids attenuates inflammation and reduce dramatically the intensity and the number of organ dysfunction. And again, looking at the most recent data, the adrenal trial, one can see easily that time to shock resolution, time to ICU discharge, time, time to be wind of mechanical ventilation were all dramatically reduced by uh, hydrocortisone in, in, in this trial. Looking at meta-analysis uh, and uh, and asking the question about uh, effect of glucocorticoids on survival, one can see that uh, that may likely depend on the group of patients. If the patient had sepsis without shock, then one can see that there is no much evidence for survival benefit. In patients who had septic shock, then one can see that it was a dramatic reduction in the risk of dying when the patients were treated with glucocorticoids. And this is also true for patients with sepsis and ARDS and, with, and for patients with sepsis related to community acquired pneumonia. So and again, in the adrenal trial also, uh, there was a not the, the effect on 90-day mortality or 28-day mortality was not significant. One can see that the direction and the magnitude of the odds ratio of dying was very similar 
to that reported by the Cochrane Review uh, two years ago. So suggesting again that there is in the adrenal trial a trend toward uh, survival benefits. And when one looks at the subgroup that were a priori defined, then one can see that uh, maybe the more catecholamine dependent the patient was, the more likely the patient to respond to treatment. And also, it looks that the better time window for treatment was to initiate treatment between 6 to 12 hours from the onset of uh, uh, vasopressor uh, use. We have now two large independent RCT that looked at the combination of hydrocortisone plus fluorocortisone. And these two trials are showing exactly the same effect. This one was published 15 years ago and demonstrating that the combination was associated with survival benefit in patient with septic shock. The second one, the, which is uh, still pending in terms of publication, uh, is likely, very, very, very likely to reproduce these data. So regarding tolerance, one can see here that the use of glucocorticoids in the large number of patients, thousands of patients, there was absolutely no evidence for an increased risk of GI bleeding, of superinfection, and of course, there were metabolic adverse events, increase in, in glucose levels and sodium levels. And this is also true in the, in the, la in the most recent data by the adrenal, adrenal trial. One can see that they were unable to show any increase in the risk of any side events. In the adrenal trial, very interestingly, there was no increase in the risk of hyperglycemia or hypernatremia. And very interestingly, look at the very few number of patients that actually had a serious adverse event. So highlighting that this treatment is very well tolerated. And this is why the task force from the uh, Society of Critical Care Medicine and the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine suggested that corticosteroids should be used in patients with septic shock, should not be used in patients with sepsis. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jilali. Uh, my first question will be, as you know, when I talk about the results of the adrenal study with the colleague, that despite the evidence they don't want to use corticosteroids, they say, and you, you, you show the data, <coughs> sorry, they say there is no difference in mortality when comparing uh, uh, placebo-treated patients to uh, hydrocortisone uh, uh, treated patients. What will you answer to these colleagues? Because for, th because for them, I can understand that, but uh, they say if there is no difference in mortality considering the number of patients, I feel like this treatment is not useful to all patients. I just would urge them to read the full article because they will see that the authors themselves concluded that people should consider using corticosteroids. Why? First of all, because as I mentioned, though the, the, the difference for mortality was not significant, the direction of the odds ratio of dying, which was uh, lower than one, suggested that if any effect is towards survival benefit, and second, most, if not all, of the important secondary outcomes chosen by the investigators actually showed uh, a benefit and substantial benefit from corticosteroids. And this is the conclusion by the authors themselves. Okay. okay. Uh, the other question, of course, you, you did show the, the curve from your first paper, not your first paper, but the paper showing that hydrocortisone plus fluidrocortisone decreased the mortality in the JAMA. And you talked about uh, uh, the approach study. We don't have yet the results, but it you said that the, the, the curves will be around the same. Well, I, I, I use, the I repeat what I said. I said, it is very, 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 very likely 
okay. that the approach trial showed the same co survival curves. Okay. So, uh, uh, and actually, uh, uh, it's it's uh, highly uh, probable that we we had two independent trials showing survival benefits okay. from the combination of hydrocortisone plus fluorocortisone. Is there any place regarding uh, this treatment is cheap, is well tolerated, seem efficient? Can we should we treat all the patients or should we still trying to assess the adrenal functions u yes. using uh, a CTH stimulation and stuff like that, or just a septic shock is a, a good uh, indication to treat patients? This is a very important question. And uh, my, my main concern is that because, as you said, these are very not expensive drugs available everywhere, that every single patient gets steroids uh, and maybe too long, too uh, high dose, and, and inaccurately. So um, my, my job in the next few years uh, is to, to, to understand and to identify those patients who should not be treated by corticosteroids. But before this question, is it better to treat more than not enough? You know, as, as, uh, as always, uh, it's uh, extremely uh, difficult to extrapolate the use, uh, the effects shown for, for treatment on a specific population to different population, then you may have the, uh, the balance of benefit to risk might not be the same. And uh, when the benefit may vary considerably, the risk are always the same, always high. So, so you still think that the dose of vasopressor is a good uh, trigger? Well, I can say that I'm not the only one to think this, because, uh, for example, uh, FDA has recently uh, allowed the uh, trial on, on angiotensin II to be conducted with uh, a primary outcome uh, based on the vasopressor use. So I think that is becoming uh, an important uh, outcome, and again, for patients and family and physicians, having uh, their patients being um, uh, being weaned off uh, vasopressor and discharged from the hospital earlier is really valuable. You know that I'm convinced and I want to treat my patient with, but should I use short high dose of treatment? Or it's, uh, for I have to forget that, mm -hmm. and now it's for everyone's low dose of prolonged infusions of hydrocortisone? Is it a, still a, a, a debate or it's closed? No, it's not close because we really don't know what is the optimal dose or the optimal duration. What we know uh, for sure is uh, for you, you do not need 30 mics per kilo of methylprednisolone uh, to modulate uh, the, the immune response to sepsis or RDS. We know that uh, equivalent of 200 milligram of hydrocortisone provided the same effect. So the lower the dose, the less likely you get adverse events for the same benefit. And, and last question, uh, Gilali, uh, why, why uh, keeping on using um, fluidro fluidrocortisone? Because I, I felt like um, 200 milligrams of uh, hydrocortisone had uh, enough um, uh, mineralo uh, yes, uh, properties. And I, I thought it was enough to have um, uh, an effect on the, on the pressure. Yeah, that's not true. Uh, one, uh, one illustration is that the recent uh, guidelines from the endocrine societies from the US and, the, and European society clearly again mentioned that in primary adrenal insufficiency, the uh, ad addition of a mineral corticoid is mandatory as a, a hydrocortisone uh, mineral corticoid activity might not be enough. And in particular, when there is uh, s uh, strong inflammation, as in this case, our downregulation of the uh, shuttle that uh, tra transform cortisol to cortisone, uh, which then can bind to the mineral corticoid receptor. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Gilali. We're waiting for the result of the approach study.